Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Recently I picked up myself an Elegoo Mars, a MSLA printer from Elegoo. That's a printer that requires UV curable resin, which, if you haven't already heard, is fairly toxic. Once it's solidified, it's not toxic anymore, but in a liquid state it is. So in order to be printing with UV resins on a regular basis, there's some safety equipment that you need, as well as other accessories to finish the curing process and clean the prints and basically post-process them after printing. So I've accumulated a bunch of stuff, equipment, things that I'm going to be using to do my MSLA, DLP, whatever you want to call it, printing. So I just want to run through those things. So if you want to get into something like this, then hopefully this will be a reasonably good guide to... Uh, get you stuff that you might need and basically an idea of what it costs. I mean, I've not necessarily gone for the very cheapest options here. I mean, I don't want to skimp on my own personal safety, but if you do, which I don't suggest you do, you probably could do it cheaper. So first things first, let's look at eye protection. I've got a pair of UVEX safety goggles and these were not very expensive but should be perfect for this application. You could probably get away with safety glasses, so just basically a front lens, but the addition of additional protection kind of sealed to your face means that if something splashes up and moves in a curving motion, it can't go round the back of the lens into your eye or anything like that. The next thing I've got is a mask that's suitable for working with volatile organic compounds, VOCs, or just organic compounds, which are volatile. So this mask is suitable for working with those along with these specific filters. There are other filters that will also work for organic compounds, but you can't use filters that are designed for particles only, or particulates. This is a 6000 series mask with 6051 series, well, 6051 filters. I'll leave a link below to a 3M spec sheet, which will give you some ideas of the different filters and masks that are available. The next piece of safety equipment is gloves, arguably the most important based on you're almost certainly going to be getting resin contact with your hands if you don't wear them. So an absolute must, well these are also absolute musts, but still an absolute must for working with resin. So these are nitrile gloves, very simple, single use disposable gloves. Speaking of disposal, because these are volatile compounds, they do have to be properly disposed of, so make sure you take them to your local recycling centre or somewhere that can dispose of them correctly. So I think that's mainly it for the key safety equipment. Now let's move on to the curing stage. So your first stage, after getting it out of the printer, is a bath in isopropyl alcohol. So the ideal solution for that is a sealed container. This is a standard kind of clip lock food container that we have in the UK and probably across most of Europe, probably in the US. They're probably everywhere by now. One accessory you might want to have for washing your prints in isopropyl is some sort of container to kind of dunk them into, if that makes sense. So basically like a basket on the inside. I think that's pretty good. So that will get probably not filled with isopropyl. I'll just only use as much as I need for now because I'm not doing massive prints yet. So to do the UV curing step, you need basically something to impart a lot of ultraviolet light onto your part. So for this, we've got not that, not that, not that, but this. So this is a roll of UV LEDs with a small little power connector and it also comes with a power adapter and some fittings to fix it to something. So this would be really useful for something else. So how do you actually apply your light to your part? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it, but I'm gonna use a DIY solution, which involves aluminum foil, well, kitchen foil, and a plastic box. So I'm going to use spray adhesive to spray the inside of the box piece by piece and then line it with aluminium foil. So what we then need on top of that is one of these. So basically you want something to turn your print around and around and around. I'm probably going to stick with batteries for this. So I got some rechargeable batteries to use in it. You can also get solar powered ones, but I don't think um, 
Typical solar panels use ultraviolet light to power them. They normally power off the visible light as there's more of it from the sun. So the sun's light is only like 4% UV. Now the next bit is a kind of something specific to my setup. So over in the corner where I have my uh, kind of UV station, if you like, all the kind of stuff that I use for it, I have some LED lights. And it seems like because they're white LED lights, they for some reason seem to be emitting some UV. I mean, that's not ideal. They're basically a cool white LED. I might be wrong. It might be a total waste of time me doing this, but I'm going to swap them out. I'm going to swap them out for this. This is basically the same thing that I've already got fitted, but these LEDs are red. They're lower energy waves and they won't cure the resin. Unfortunately, those did not come with a separate power adapter, but I'm probably gonna to need to deliver a fair bit of power to them anyway, so I'll use the power adapter that I'm using for my current LEDs. I think that's all for this episode. One more thing quickly before we go. These have been used over at my um, workstation for a bit, so there may be some trace amounts of uh, resin on them, so I'm wearing a glove. But these are just some of the tools that I'm using to manage and control the prints. First thing is this very small little pallet knife. The blade is very, very thin and fairly flexible, which helps a lot when getting prints off of these surfaces. The fact that it's metal is not great because it means you can cut or damage the FEP film and the aluminium print surface fairly easily. However, I've not had a problem yet, and because it is very thin, I can kind of just slide it without having to dig in at all, and that really helps when it comes to removing prints. But it is quite good for after you've done your resin cure in the, no, after you've done your secondary wash, first gel, second wash with the isopropyl alcohol, you can use this as a kind of blower to dry that isopropyl off fairly quickly, and it will give you a good indication of whether that's sufficiently uh, cleaned. These are some filters. These came with the Elegoo Mars, and they're just to basically get some of the large lumps out of the resin when you put it back in the pot. Next, I have just a small pair of plastic tweezers. They're really nothing fancy, nothing expensive, but it just is a fairly delicate tool for picking up parts once they come out of the um, printer, but before they're really very cured, just in case you damage the surface or if they're very fine, very small. A small pair of plastic tweezers just helps you grab things without using your big squishy fingers. The last thing is a And I think that is now everything. I'll give you a bit of an update, hopefully, if I remember, about how this progresses and what worked and what didn't in a couple of weeks when I've been using my Elegoo Mars for a little while. And of course, I'll be trying to publish a review of the Elegoo Mars when I've used it for a while. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that. That's it for me today. I shall see you in the next one.